championship tradition continues. Georgia Southern football with coach Paul Johnson. This week's highlights are brought to you in part by East Georgia Medical Center. Compassionate care without compromise. Coca-Cola, always Coke. And by Rozier Ford in Statesboro, the dealership that does business the right way. Georgia Southern Football with Coach Paul Johnson. Welcome to Georgia Southern Football 2001. I'm Brady Posk alongside Eagles head coach Paul Johnson. And coach, I, there's no mystery. This has been a, a very tough place for the Eagles to come play in the past years. Well, it has. I think part of it, uh, quite honestly, we haven't played very well here. And Appalachian has a good football team. but uh, And it's going to be a big test today. But... Uh, I feel good that we're ready to play. And we're coming off a big win last week. Uh, offense looked like it was uh, well improved from weeks before. Uh, how do you see the offense coming into this week? Well, Appalachian strength, no question, is on their defense. Uh, you know, they're very physical. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a hard-fought football game. I, I, I would be really surprised if it was a high-scoring game. I, I don't think it'll get like that. And uh, we've just got to maximize our, our possessions and try to take care of the ball. The team that does that's the best takes care of the ball the team that's going to win. You've seen the uh, Appalachian play down to the Citadel and kind of up to Furman. Uh, how do you expect them to, to play here at home today? Well, I, the Citadel's pretty good on defense, so I don't know if they were playing down, but, uh, you know, Appalachian struggle when they turned the ball over, and, and uh, when they haven't, they've been very good. And defensively, they've been pretty solid all year. How was the week of practice and uh, injury front? Well, practice was okay. We got a couple guys injured, and... Uh, but that's, uh, you know, somebody else will have to step in. And uh, as I said, I, I think we're ready to play. I'll be, I'll be really surprised if we don't go out and play our tails off today. All right, Coach, good luck. When we come back, first half highlights of Appalachian State and Georgia Southern, but first the Coca-Cola play of the day. Georgia Southern Football 2001, Brady Posk along with Eagles head coach Paul Johnson. Coach, over 15,000 fans are at Kid Brewer Stadium today, and we brought a lot of our great fans today. Yeah, we also. sure did, and they were into the game and loud and a big help to our football team. And we got the ball first, and uh, unfortunately on the third play of the game, uh, JR, a, a, a little awkward pitch there got fumbled. Right, and uh, you know, we had a little miscommunication. I'm not sure we got everybody that was supposed to be blocked, blocked either. I know we ran a play that we shouldn't run against that front, and uh, you know, just what you don't want to happen, start the game out, turn the ball over deep in your end. So they take over on the 12-yard line, but on fourth and inches, Eric McIntyre and the rest of the defense come up huge. Well, they really did and set the tone for the game, especially the first quarter. And uh, that was a huge stop. Uh, you know, our guys played the great goal line defense all day, but that was uh, really big to start the game. And then later on, they would get the ball back after a punt from us, and uh, we stripped the ball from Jerry Beard to recover on their 35, so we take it back. Right, and just kind of changed the whole field position, and uh, you know, which was, uh, in this game was big. It was a defensive football game and a field position game. And then when we got the ball, one of Adrian's only big runs today, a 13-yard uh, bowling up the middle run for a first down. Right, and uh, you know, they did a great job on their defensive line, and they were committing, you know, we, we had two on two with a ball carry, and normally when we have that, AP makes a lot of yards, but uh, to their credit, they were getting after us up front. And then we capitalize on the turnover when J.R. Revere takes it 23 yards out to make it 7-0 to us. Well, it was great to get up on them up here. I think that's the first time maybe that we've been ahead of them in Boone. And things started to settle down, we thought, after that. Then after a three and out, Mark Myers run for 57 yards down to the one yard line. Mark made a great uh, great play on the option. Jay did a nice job getting it pitched out there and, and we executed fairly well. And JR would dive in from one yard out to make it 14 nothing. We still have 6-13 left in the, in the first quarter, but it seemed like it was late in the second. Well, there has been a lot of action. Both teams have turned the ball over on their end of the field and uh, we'd hit some really big plays on offense. Then on the kickoff after the touchdown to make it 14 to nothing, Derek Butler comes up with a jaw-breaking tackle. Oh, he really came in there and knocked the ball loose. And, uh, you know, 
Disappointing we couldn't get it. I think if we got the thing there, we could have really put some pressure on. And then on the second and sixth, a reverse to Little, and we sniff it out for a nice four-yard loss. We did. We did a nice job. Jamar Jones did a nice job staying home, and our guys rallied to the ball inside. And then defense stepping up again on third and ten. Eric Hadley in for a second and eight-yard loss. Right, and uh, again, I, you know, I can't say enough about how well our defense played today. So we win the first quarter up 14 to nothing. make them punt. Then in the second quarter, they uh, they used some uh, ball control on us. 18 play drive to make it 14 to seven, and actually Nick Kearns also went down on that drive. Right. Well, we were losing people left and right on defense, and uh, at one point we had David Young out, Deion Stokes out, Nick Kearns out, and uh, you know we put some guys in there. And Derek Williams came in, hadn't played a lot lately, and did a great job, I thought. And, uh, you know, whoever we put in answered the call. They just kept stepping up. And other than that one long drive, I think they converted a couple of fourth downs on us. You know, they had a hard time actually driving the ball on us. And then they would get the ball back on the kickoff as we fumble it on the 17 and we still don't get the ball back yet. No, and, and you know, it's terrible any time, but especially after they just had an eight-minute drive or whatever it was. And, you know, we lost Kevin Davis Wednesday in practice, and we had a, another redshirt freshman back there, and he just didn't take care of the ball. And, uh, you know, I, I'd say he learned a valuable lesson today. And we come up big on defense again. On, on first down, Derek Williams makes a big hit, and they're called for holding to push him back. And then Corey Middlebrooks breaks through for a nice four-yard loss. Right. We had back-to-back. Uh, -back, they had negative plays. They got a big uh, holding call that backed them up and put them behind. And then when Corey came through and made the play for minus yardage, now they're way behind. You know, he ended up second and 24, and it's hard to overcome that. And then on second 20, Williams has a nice pass break up. And then third and 20, it's uh, Winston Hardison with a sack that drives him all the way back to the 42 and 4. Right, and Winston's had a knack for that when he's come into the game. He's, throughout the, the last couple of years, he finds a way to get in and make a big play for us and did it again. We get the ball back, but uh, their, their defense was tough today, and uh, we tried to punt a uh, snap over Scott Shelton's head, and he had to run it out of bounds for a, for a Well, safety. Scott did a great job not panicking and just picking the ball up and stepping out of the end zone was the right play to make. And, uh, you know, we made enough snafus in the, in the special teams today to, to lose the football game, but uh, to our guys' credit, they found a way to come back. And on the on the kickoff after the uh, after the safety, they get good field position on the 50, but Freddie Pescada brings down Burchett and, uh, for a nice two-yard loss, and that puts them in questionable field to goal range at that point. Right, and uh, once again, it seemed like that whole second quarter they played with the ball on our side of the field, and, uh, you know, to uh, our defense, again, just did a nice job keeping them out of the end zone. Then on fourth and four, a long field goal, they go for it, and we break up the pass and take the ball back with under four minutes to play. Right, and uh, there again, you know, answering the call on a turnover, and uh, what can you say? They did it over and over. And we take a five-point lead to the half of 14-9. to nine. How are you feeling about how the game has gone so far? Well, I felt like that we were in great shape for as many mistakes as we've made and as poorly as we've played, and uh, I thought the, the first possession in the second half was going to be big, and I tried to stress that, and I tried to challenge our guys up front on offense to get some going, some movement, so we could run the ball inside, because you know, when they can take two guys and play the fullback the way they were doing, it makes it awfully hard to, to, to run anything. But we win the first half up 14-9, to nine, and when we come back, we'll have second half highlights of Georgia Southern versus Appalachian State. But first, the Ask Coach Johnson question. Back to Georgia Southern football 2001 time for the auto shine ask coach Johnson question and coach a Gene Prescott from Garden City asks what do you think of Adrian Peterson's chances of winning the Heisman and possibly going to the NFL well it's a two-part question I, in, in all honesty uh, you know he's certainly a good enough player to be considered for the Heisman trophy I think that that's a long shot and we know that uh, the second part of the question I, I think that uh, undoubtedly he's going to be drafted probably drafted very high and uh, I think he'll have a great career in the NFL. I think that he's a very special running back and got a lot of ability, and I think he'll do well on the next level. And he's a big reason why people uh, try to shut us down and why we have to change our offense a lot. Well, you know, they uh, a lot of people try to shut, shut us down, shut him down. Today, to Appalachian's credit, they shut him down with 
with the right people. They didn't add any extra guys. They didn't have to. And when we come back, we'll see how Adrian and the rest of the Eagles did in the second half on Georgia Southern Football 2001. Ask the coach and win big. Send in a postcard or register online at abc22tv.com with a question about the Georgia Southern Eagles. Then watch Sundays at 1 with Brady Fossick and Coach Paul Johnson. If your question is selected, you'll win an autographed limited edition print and be in the running to win an autographed Eagles jersey. So register today. Then watch all the action Sundays at 1 on Georgia Southern Football with Coach Paul Johnson on ABC 22. We got to work for everything we get, and uh, today wasn't no different. And I'm proud of the seniors and our team. We, we stood in there, we overcame adversity, and we, we came out with a win. I tell you, it was two good football teams playing each other, and I, we knew coming in, they're outstanding on defense, and I knew they were. We're going to give ourselves a chance. We're going to come out here and give ourselves a fighting chance. We're not going to wait until the third, fourth quarter to all of a sudden decide we're going to turn on. We're going to do it right now. It's a long ride home if you lose, uh, but it's a you know, fun ride home when you win. Welcome back to Georgia Southern Football 2001. Coach, the second half, you said the first drive was going to be big, and it, it was a big drive. Well, it was a big drive, but for the wrong team. And, you know, they hit a big play on us. They, uh, you know, hit a big uh, post route on third down on play action. And, you know, it was a nice execution by them. We had two guys there. I think James misjudged the ball and went underneath it. And, and uh, Drake was right there. They, their guy just went up and made the play. And then Burchett, a uh, first down run, and then we, we give him better position. We hit him out of bounds. Yeah, and it was disappointing that we'd lose our composure like that. And, and uh, you know, to really get him down there inside our 10 again. And Jerry Beard, seven-yard touchdown run to cap off the drive. They go for the two-point conversion. We stop them on the one-yard line. But App State leads for the first time in the game 15-14 to 14 with two minutes into the second half. Right, and to their credit, they had fought back from being down 14. And then later on, Georgia Southern gets the ball in the third quarter. Adrian Peterson breaks through on his first run. 20-yard gain, and you can add 15 to that on the late hit. Right, to, to really give us good field position. And, you know, they did a nice job defensively. They, they give us a negative play on the... Uh, on first down, you know, we were we were having a hard time very releasing and getting inside. They were jamming us, and then we couldn't log them because they were coming up the field. I mean, we were just having a tough time blocking. And then they would get Jr. on a 10-yard sack, and that would force us to punt. Right, and uh, again, that's that's the play I was talking about, and and we we had a tough time uh, protecting. We didn't try to throw the ball a whole lot because I knew they were they were really good pass rushers. So App would take over after the punt, and then Michael Youngblood comes up with a huge interception deep down in that territory. Well, Scott Sheldon hit a great punt for us, and Z Walden did a nice job covering, and I think we had him hemmed up back there on inside their 10 to change field position, and then Mike Youngblood came up with a big, big interception. Since they were shutting down Adrian pretty much, JR making a lot happen today, a nice five-yard run on first down to put it down to right, the Right, well, two. we started running a little midline where we could read the guys over the guards and not have to block them all the time, and that seemed to work a little better for us than trying to block them. And then JR, two-yard two touchdown run. We. We faked the two-point conversion. We're up five, trying to get up seven, and but it's it's swatted away. But we retake the lead at 20 to 15. Right, and it was big, I think, to come back and retake the lead. And you know, I was disappointed in our two-point play, and that's that's my fault. I mean, they had too many guys over there. We should have got out of that and uh, went over and kicked it. We still lead 20 to 15 with 9:27 left in the third quarter. Then later in the third, uh, we get the ball back after holding app again and. Adrian fumbles and they take over on R29. Well, there again, we gave him great field position and, you know, we've got to hold on to the ball. I thought that he was down, but, but they ruled it a fumble and, uh, you know, you've got to hang on to the football. And then Burchett would get them into a, a third and goal situation from the seven yard line, but we tip it around in the end zone and, and get the interception and bring it all the way back out to the 14. Yeah, a huge great, play. great play by Derek Williams and then the corner over there. The ball got batted around and kept them from getting a field goal and, and really was a point saving play. And definitely the took a lot of wind out of their sails right then on that play. Well, no question. Then uh, we would go three and out on the punt. Folks would have actually returned the punt for a touchdown, but for the second time in the day, it was brought back for holding another. Uh, we, we had a little trouble containing him today. Well, we had trouble containing him because they were blocking us in the back. And when you do that and you, and you get outside the contain guys, you know, he's a great returner, but 
it, that's why you can't block in the back. So it's, uh, you know, until you look at the film and, and see everybody, I felt like we were in our lanes, but they they were clipping the guy out there on the edge and getting around the corner, and, and that's why they do bring him back. Then later in the fourth quarter, they would have the ball, but uh, Dreek Cooper, a nice stop at the two-yard line on a third and goal that would force them to kick a 20-yard field goal. Right, and a big play by Dreek. We were in roll coverage over there, cover two, and he came up and run supported very well. He hadn't done it early, and, and, and he learned from his mistake and came in there and played a nice play. So the lead is down to two with a, about 11-13 left in the fourth quarter on a second down. Mark Myers with a nice eight-yard run there. Well, Mark, we finally got the ball pitched. We quit, you know, we went to a two-way option and just pitched it. And uh, we didn't do as good a job blocking the perimeter as we liked, but at least we finally got a positive play. The next play, JR, on a third and two, takes off for a 72-yard touchdown run. That's pretty much the backbreaker in this game. Well, it, it was a huge play, and it was a midline option again, the same play he scored on that on the goal line. And, uh, you know, we got some nice blocks. He made the free safety miss and had enough speed to get down the sideline and get an end zone. So we take a 27-18 to lead, but there's still 10-10 left in the game, and uh, I mean, Coach, we would get a, a nice three and out on defense after our score, and, and, and that was pretty big and kept the momentum on our side. Well, it was big, and, uh, you know, I think that, that we were getting some good heat on the on the quarterback and forcing him to throw early, and, uh, you know, it was a great job to come out and stop him. And we were up two scores, and to stop him and have him punt the ball back to us was, was really big. And then uh, we get the ball back. It looked like we were going to go three and out, but on a fourth and two, they got a a personal foul running into the kicker that gave us 15 big yards. Well, it was huge, and, uh, you know, it was, uh, we, we took a, a timeout. We, we ran the, you know, fourth down. We, I, we weren't going to go for it, but I was trying to take as much time off the clock as I could. And, uh, you know, then we go out and punt, and, and they run into the kicker to give us a chance to run a new set of downs. We weren't able to score on that drive, but we still ran off some pretty good time on that drive. Well, we ran a lot of time off on the clock, and, and you know, forced them to use all their timeouts. Then uh, they would take over again late in the fourth quarter with 3.55 left. And on first down from the 35, Freddie comes up with a huge sack for a 10-yard loss. Great play by Freddie, and he's played well all year. And, you know, once again, you get them second 25, and it's hard to overcome that. So then uh, we would force them to punt on a fourth and 20. They were deep down their own territory. We get the ball back with 3.09 and uh, pretty much run out the clock from there, going to win 27-18. to 18. Right, and... Uh, great win on the road and, and I was proud of our football team. Our defense uh, played great goal line defense all day and, and the offense found a way to make it happen when they had to. Uh, you know, we had to score. We hit a couple big plays and there at the end of the game we were able to run you know, run out the clock, not getting the ball back. So it was a, a, a huge win for us. It might not have been the, the, the prettiest way you wanted to win the game, but actually coming up here and winning, I mean, how huge is that when psychologically the team knows they've only come up here and won once before? Well, we'd only been up here twice, and uh, we talked about not having done that because that's one of the few things this group hadn't accomplished. And to their credit, they, they played their tails off all day. And improved to 6-0 and overall. 4-0 in the conference and a, a huge win at App State here and it's going to be a pretty pretty happy homecoming week at least leading up to the game next week. Right, and we'll have to go back and get ready for the Sutter. And when we come back, we'll preview next week's game on Georgia Southern Football 2001. Welcome back to Georgia Southern Football 2001. Coach, it's now officially homecoming week, and uh, a team that's kind of, we can kind of familiarize with the team that played App State today, the Citadel, played the App pretty good a couple weeks ago. Well, they played them to 8-6. I'd say they played them real good, and the Citadel's another outstanding defensive team. I noticed they lost today against Furman, but, uh, you know, this has always been one of our toughest coaching jobs. You come off a big game, an emotional game with Appalachian, and you come home and, and uh, Hopefully we'll, our guys will understand and we'll come out and practice with a little intensity and, and get ready to play better because we can play better than we played today. But, uh, you know, like I said, hey, we won the football game and we're 6-0 and and that's as good as we can be right now. One thing we didn't really get a chance to touch on, Adrian didn't get his 100 yards, but I'm sure he'll much rather take a win at App State than his 100 yards, and he already has the record. Right, he already has the record, and I think if you'd ask him coming in a win versus 100 yards, he'd have taken a win. Any day, I'm sure the whole team would. Next week, back at Paulson Stadium for homecoming against the Citadel for Coach Johnson. I'm Brady Postick. We'll see you next week on Georgia Southern Football 2001. Paul 
Michael Johnson. This week's highlights are brought to you in part by East Georgia Medical Center. Compassionate care without compromise. Coca-Cola, always Coke. And by Rozier Ford in Statesboro, the dealership that does business the right way. Georgia Southern Football with Coach Paul Johnson.